Okay, welcome. And this is like the third time I've tried to record this because I was telling the story of how I came to create this program, but you know what? Just forget about it. I'll go straight into it. And this is it. So I just want to show you the song. And this song here uh, was created with this drum program. Notice the intro as well. Okay, so this song right here was created with that drum program and it's a, pro a drum program that I created to emulate in a certain way drum breaks because I was working with drum breaks and I was really really enjoying the way they sounded but I wanted to work with my one shots so I created this workflow this technique that uh, allows me to have that sort of, uh, of feel or that sort of sound of a drum break but using one shot so you can actually change the sound at any point you can move pieces around at any point this isn't just good for you to create beats i think what this is good for as well is for you to understand how beats work that's what was one of the big revelations to me learning this because i've been doing this all along but only now i understood these eight blocks of eight notes uh, before I was always just drumming on the pads and trying to find a pattern that I liked but you know all that that I did throughout these years kind of boils down to to this which is very simple so if you go here to the um, to my drum track drum emulation I have these eight pads right here that can create a bunch of of combinations a bunch of patterns and what I found out from cutting these drum breaks is that you get these eight note combinations right so you get a kick you get a space and a kick you get a double kick get a kick and a snare you get a snare so basically the same things but with snares space and a snare double snare and a kick a snare and a kick right so I found these eight blocks from just cutting all drum breaks and I found that these are the building blocks of boom bap of hip-hop right so once you narrow it down to this you start seeing beats in a different way and that's what happened to me so how does it work I think the best way is for you is for me to show you and yeah let me get here into the program and tell you how everything is set up so I have my kick then I have a space here on the offset so the kick actually triggers with a delay right uh, a double kick now you can what you can do here I have two kicks right here but what I'm going to do is this I'm going to take this kick away from here I've, I've been just uh, improving the, the drum program so the way I'm using it now it's not with two kicks on the same pad but this kick is now triggering that one through simultaneous play because this one is the one that has a delay and this one has is supposed to be a double kick I'll, I'll use simultaneous play to trigger that one afterwards so I'll go for this is a2 right and I will I want to lower the level of this one right and this is has a snare as well what I'm going to do here I'm going to take this away and I'm going to through simultaneous play I'm going to trigger this one because that's the snare with the delay and this is going to be a6 right I also want to lower the level of this so this one's going to go as well and so this is a6 right 
Okay, let me see something here. This one has a kick. So I'm not using two sounds on the same pad because uh, in case I want to just adjust one of, of the, the sounds, it's on a separate pad, right? That's the reason why I'm not putting two sounds on the same pad. Uh, so this one's going to trigger A2. So let's go to here, A2, right? And all these are triggering pad A9. So all these eight pads are triggering the, the hi-hats. Now you don't need to do that. So you can have your hi-hat on the side and that's the way I'm using it as well. So, uh, but for now, let's just keep it this way. So as I said, the thing I wanted to show you is that I'm using the offset to delay the kicks. So you get that, that pattern. Okay. Uh, and if you push it all the way, the delay, the amount of time for the delay that you get here is really perfect for boom bap, I find. Uh, you get a, a nice swing, but what I would advise is that you guys record this unquantized or you can just use humanize to shift the notes to swing things a little bit or just record it unquantized. So really the focus here is that these eight things right here will create tons of patterns for you and you can change the sound of the pattern at any point. So how it works, very simple. The thing is that you, you just keep uh, the rhythm on eight notes, but you jump from pad to pad. Now how you record something like this, you just go So it's that simple. You can create a pattern like that on the go. So this is really good for beginners. This will also help you. If you work with this for like just a few weeks or so, you'll see, you'll notice the difference on how this can really help. Now, one of the cool things about this as well is that you can always change patterns at any point. You don't need to be searching for a placement for the kick because when you understand how the pattern works, you can just shift a note really quick. So you can go like, And it's, it's that easy. You can just shift notes around and create different patterns. And if you don't like the snares or the kicks, you can just change the kick or the snare. That's super easy as well. You just go to the browser and you choose a, a snare that you like. So let's say this one, just load it in, replace it. Okay, so you need to change for all the snares. What you do is you go to the program, put this. So use multiple and you can now go to the snare and just tap back again. Change the hi-hats if you want. Just go and choose some hi-hats right here. Okay, load that in. Let's choose a kick as well. Load that in. Same thing, go to the program. Just go into multiple. Select all your kicks. So it's that easy to change sounds with this uh, technique right there. Let's say I want to take away all the kicks and put it so put them somewhere else. 
can just transpose this up. So it's that easy to change a pattern. You don't need to re-record everything again. You just select the MIDI notes, transpose them to where you want them to be, or delete them. You don't have, if you notice, I didn't press record once to record the beat. Only at the beginning to record the pattern. But, you know, I actually have this project. When you open up a new project, it comes already with this pattern written down. So I, I never press record to record a drum pattern. I don't need I don't need to. I just shift the notes around. Because you know the combination, I already know the combination by heart, I can just go here, imagine what it would sound like and just move the pieces around, put them in, in place, and that combination will be there. So I think you will get the point of it if you do it yourself and try to work with this technique. Let me know if it works out for you. It's been doing wonders for my workflow. I hope I was clear enough on how this works. Uh, if you get the concept of it, you can develop more ideas. You can have more hi-hats, a hi-hat with a space, a double hi-hat, and just a normal hi-hat. So this is what I wanted to share with you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this technique, this workflow. Uh, it's really easy to create this drum program. I've been using it on all of my beats. Uh, I'll have a beat tape ready this month, hopefully, for you guys to listen to. Uh, thank you so much for following the channel, and I hope you guys can share this as well. Uh, hit that subscribe button and all of that good stuff. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.